Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this special follow-up webinar, which is an interdisciplinary case study panel discussion brought to you by the Mental Health Professionals Network. Uh, some of you might not know who they are, but they're a not-for-profit organisation uh, contracted by the Commonwealth Government Department of Health and Ageing, and their role is, is to essentially make available to roll out interdisciplinary mental health workshops right across Australia. And the idea is that uh, we're going to create sustainable, self-supported clinical networks. And the object of this webinar is, first of all, to identify discipline-specific approaches to the diagnosis, the treatment and management of adolescent mental health presentations, with particularly a feature of depression, suicidality, and maybe even cyberbullying. And secondly, to recognise the ways in which mental health interdisciplinary collaboration will obviously contribute to a better uh, patient outcome. Now, the session outline is really quite simple. The webinar will be composed of two separate parts. The first will be a facilitated case study panel discussion. The second will be an opportunity for you as webinar viewers to ask questions and obviously receive answers. We will only go for an hour and a half, but in this time the panel will share with you discipline-specific tips and strategies for working with our clients tonight, whose name is Tim, and obviously uh, field questions from fully welcome. Uh, all of you who have uh, logged on, uh, you've obviously shown interest and commitment to adolescent health because you've allocated time out from your busy schedule to watch this webinar live and we're very, very appreciative, particularly because we know it clashes with home and away. We appreciate the sacrifice that you're making. So as you know, this is a follow-up webinar to the first one and uh, today the focus will be on you getting some specific tips and strategies uh, from the panel about working with adolescents with this type of presentation. I'm particularly pleased to be able to welcome some new panel members and even a new discipline in the form of a mental health nurse practitioner who you'll meet later. In order to appreciate this webinar in 3D and technicolor with surround sound, please ensure that your sound is in fact activated on your computer and the volume is turned up. And during the webinar, I would encourage you all to post questions by typing them into the message box. Now, sadly, given the amount of participants, we may not have time for your specific question to be addressed, but you can always participate in a post-webinar forum to continue uh, the discussion. Please note that the PowerPoint from this particular slideshow will be available as a resource on the Mental Health Professional Network website, which is www.mhpn.org.au. Uh, needless to say, any inappropriate questions will not be uh, presented. Now I'm going to moderate the uh, panel discussion tonight, and my name is uh, Michael Carr Gregg. And I'm also going to moderate the question and answer sessions. So, uh, to the case study, and uh, this is the most important uh, part, I guess, we will have online for you to see and hear uh, several uh, people, and I'm going to introduce them as they come uh, online. So, the first thing I want to say is that true today that the majority of young people in Australia are no longer grossly malnourished, uh, they're not shoved down coal mines, or nevertheless, psychological pressures, anxieties and tensions, which really are with many of our clients, our patients, are growing up in a psychological wasteland. Without nurturing or support, growing up in circumstances of pervasive adversity and limited resources such that their developmental trajectories are certain to be irretrievably compromised. So, 
75%, as you can see, of all mental illnesses begin before the age of 25. One in four of these kids obviously can have a mental health problem, and only 30% seek profession. The truth is that mental health disorders now account for 49% of the disease burden, and that is significant. Measures as both uh, death and disability, or 55% if you believe the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. Young Australians appear to be suffering uh, mental health problems at an earlier age than before, experiencing them at higher rates than older age groups, and retaining their increased risk beyond youth into older age. So I guess this is timely, and I would be, uh, I'm delighted to introduce to you the subject of our case study tonight, who is in fact a 17-year-old uh, year 11 student. He doesn't particularly want to uh, seek help. He's not a particularly sophisticated consumer of uh, health services, let alone mental health services. So uh, he's not particularly keen to be there. He's been brought along for an assessment by his mum, uh, and she thinks he's irritable, argumentative, uh, and is worried about his poor academic performance. There's no previous history, but he does seem to be a sensitive lad. Uh, the family history basically is a mother who's tense, a father who was a heavy drinker, and of course uh, a paternal uncle who uh, has bipolar disorder. When um, you talk to him, Tim basically thinks his mother is sort of the wicked witch of the West. There's some tension with dad, some tension with uh, a particular school teacher. Significantly, there was a recent falling out with his friends. He doesn't appear to have much of an interest in schools, uh, doesn't really have much of a sense of the future and complains of being tired a lot of the time. So he is, in fact, uh, the next patient of yours, uh, Mary. And um, I'm interested to know uh, what you're going to do. Well, thanks. Um, can I just check that you can hear me on speaker, because I can pick the phone up if necessary. I can, but before I, you do that, I'm just going to introduce you, Mary. You are a GP and you're a psychotherapist and you work at Headspace Townsville. Uh, you have a mixed role as a senior clinician, uh, and that includes seeing clients for medical, psychological, medicine and psychotherapy appointments. Uh, you are also making a very strange noise. Um, it was me. My phone was about to lose battery, so I was going to lose you all. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Um, so you're the very experienced GP in working at Headspace, which is a national initiative with 30 centres around Australia and uh, is one of the Townsville General Practice Network programs. And uh, you actually work there with five other doctors at Headspace. I believe you work four days a week, so you're a very good person to tell us how you are going to deal with young Tim. Thank you for that, Michael. I'll try and live up to it. Um, so I guess the, uh, the other thing I'd like to say is that a number of my points are, um, in fact, the same as some of the other um, presenters later. So I'm, I'm not going to labour those ones because I think there's more erudite pr uh, presentations coming up. But one of the key things is um, engagement with young people. And I think GPs often struggle because um, of our time constraints. So I'm aware that I have a luxurious position where I can take an hour for an initial appointment with a young person. But even if you don't have an hour, you need to give young people the sense that you are genuinely interested in them. And um, they do, if I'm allowed to say, they do have a pretty um, finely tuned bullshit meter. And so if they, um, if they, I'm from North Queensland, so I apologise for that. Um, if they sense that you're not genuine, they are not going to tell you anything. So I guess the key thing is to be really genuinely interested. Um, it's a little bit delicate sometimes. In this case, Mum's brought Tim in, so Mum's going to want to say some things to you as well. I, with a 17-year-old, I would generally see them both together first for a few minutes, and then I'd see Tim on his own. And I, I generally wouldn't see Mum on her own unless Tim had already consented to that. Um, now, there's um, somebody else is going to talk about the heads assessment, but I think it's a really good model for um, approaching adolescents. 
for the things that you would talk about first are less challenging. So who do you live with? What grade are you in at school? What subjects do you like? What don't you like? And then you work towards the things like sexual relationships and drug use and then I wrote death, but you know, suicide, self-harm. I think GPs or doctors in general are trained to cut to the chase because we've got such a short time. So, um, you know, we, we want to know what the presenting complaint is and sort it out and get them out the door generally in 10 or 15 minutes. And um, if we go straight to those sort of questions with a young person, they probably won't answer them. So I find the heads assessment a really um, useful model and it doesn't have to take an hour. You can get used to it. I'm just changing the slide. Um, so I won't continue with the head assessment because someone else is going to talk about that some more. Um, I did want to mention about um, self-harm and suicide risk. I think we've all got fairly good at asking the screening questions, but I think sometimes if people say yes, doctors tend to panic, to panic because we think that we're going to have to do something or we're going to have to fix it. But my experience has been that it's often worth actually asking quite a lot more. And the young person having the permission to talk about their suicidal um, ideation, maybe um, plans or previous attempts, but to actually talk a little bit more, or quite a lot more in fact, about you know when it's happened, what have they been feeling like beforehand, how did they feel after, um, because it's, such, it's a topic that people find so difficult to talk about. It's probably the one thing that mum is most worried about and will panic the most if she has any sense that um, Tim's at risk of harming himself or killing himself. And so he's probably learnt not to talk about it. So for us to um, give him a chance to talk about it is, um, can be very, very valuable. Um, with engagement, I think it's important, even if he didn't want to come, there's probably something that he can recognise that might be valuable for him to address. So he might actually be really distressed about those relationships at school that have broken down or with his mates and he might actually be quite pleased to talk about that. So I guess my um, approach is to try and find out what's important to him and that's what we focus on. Um, GPs are probably most of the ones on this webinar anyway would be pretty used to setting to um, writing general practice mental health treatment plans. And one of the things that we have to do there is look at goal setting. And I found that a really useful question is, it actually comes out of um, solution focused uh, therapy. But the question is, how will you know it's been helpful? So if, if I refer you to a psychologist or you take a course of this medication or we make a lifestyle intervention or all of the above, how will you know it's been helpful? what will be different. And I find that they're often able to come up with quite specific things then, rather than just, um, I want to be happy. Um, and then the final thing, which we'll be covering again later, is that um, medication is not always first line. In fact, it's usually not the first line in depression, and it's not in for very many of the drugs and their effectiveness, and um, there is a lot of evidence for other things. So um, I think it's worth remembering that it's not first line. That can be really difficult for GP, you know, you have a artist or a counsellor or anybody else that you can really refer this young person to. Um, I guess my point there is also not to underestimate the value of your own interaction with that young person. So sometimes if you're able to say, look, I understand that things have been really hard for you, I'm pleased that you've been able to come and have the courage to talk about it, and I think that it will be important for us to see each other regularly. If you're able to make an appointment to see them once a week, even for 20 minutes, how are things going, what's happened in the last week, sometimes that can actually be enough because you're a uh, an objective kind of listener. You don't have to know any magic counselling skills. You just have to be safe and respectful. Um, and I think that that's often not valued enough that um, that the GP can... I guess for the young person, because the doctor is feeling that they're um, important enough to make time for, sometimes that in itself can be really helpful. So, you know, often, often um, 
there's a lot more than that is needed. But if you're in a small place and you're it, um, don't be scared because I think sometimes you're actually enough. So I think they were my points. Well done and uh, plenty of time to spare. Uh, other panel members, um, even though I haven't introduced you individually, do you have any comments or questions about what uh, has just been said? No, they're all absolutely in awe. Well, that's fantastic. All right, well then I'll move on to our next presenter, Simon Kinsella. Uh, Dr Kinsella is a uh, Melbourne-based clinical psychologist with uh, over 17 years of experience. He actually completed his uh, PhD researching the links between family conflict, family functioning and life satisfaction. Uh, he was a senior clinical psychologist at the Austin Health uh, Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service and in the Adolescent Day Patient Program at the Albert Road Centre for Health. Uh, and uh, currently Simon works full time in private practice where he consults children, adolescents, families and adults. He's also an honorary fellow in the Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry at the University of Melbourne. He holds statutory positions as an independent medical examiner and as a panellist for the Disciplinary Review Board and is also the current chair of the Victorian State Committee of the Australian Psychological Society and the chairman of the Melbourne branch of the Australian Psychological Society. So he's uh, eminently uh, well qualified to talk about the psychologist's perspective on a young man like him. Over to you. Thank you, Michael. Um, I guess in reading the case study, um, one thing that really stands out to me is um, the value of the information that the GP has already gathered. That information about the reluctance of Tim and um, the, the anxiety of the mother and her uh, desire to be involved in the process is really um, critical from my point of view in terms of how I might approach them and some of the, uh, some of the pitfalls that I might already need to be aware of. Uh, before before Tim walks in the door. So um, for for you GPs out there, it's, it, it is very valuable information for us to know that um, you know that Tim is reluctant and that Mum is overbearing, and that Tim sees him as uh, sorry Tim sees her as um, as being an ag. Um, to be able to confront that early on with Tim would be a very useful part of uh, part of the engagement process. I'll just uh, change slides. Okay, so um, the head assessment tool, I also don't want to go into a great deal of detail about it. I think others are going to be talking about it as well. But I suppose um, it's, it's another structured um, clinical interview technique. There's several of them around. Um, the, the nice thing about the head assessment tool is that it sets out very clearly um, most of the important dimensions of what might be happening in the young person's life and it gives you a platform to have a conversation about what's going on at home, what's going on with their employment and well, their education, their activities and so on. And um, there's plenty of information about this tool on the internet. All you need to do is actually Google head assessment tool and it will come up and actually give you a list of helpful questions and unhelpful questions to ask. Um, so um, it's a great resource. Another way of looking at um, the, the assessment process is also to look at uh, the four P's, which is um, something that's uh, prevalent in CAM services. So uh, we might look at the predisposing factors, the precipitating factors, the um, perpetuating factors, and the pre uh, protective factors, um, which is uh, uh, again, another nice way of structuring your formulation of what's actually going on with the with the young person. But the bottom line, I suppose, with both of these um, approaches is it gives you a way of looking at the biological factors, the psychological, social, um, at the person and for their family. Um, as Mary said, engagement really is is critical. Um, without it, you don't get anywhere, obviously. And young people are very good at picking up when you're not being genuine. So um, there's there's always this uh, tension going on when you're meeting people around about 17, 16, 17, 18 years of age, 
where in all likelihood they've been dragged along by a parent, or at the very least um, their parent has been the one who's initiated the contact. So there's this tension between recognising the young person has, has some sort of an issue, but it may not be the uh, issue that the parent's bringing them in with, or at least that might not be the thing that they want to talk about first. And, you know, Merit made a very good point that, um, that um, to begin with, to talk about what they actually want to get out of, out of um, meeting with you is going to get you a lot further than saying, OK, Mum says you're depressed, tell me about that. Um, so engaging and setting, um, setting the scene, I suppose, that this is the space for them to actually explore their issues, that it's not just a forum for their mother or father or whoever to, um, to voice their agenda on them. It's really important. The other thing that's critical in these sort of scenarios is setting the boundaries of confidentiality. Um, as a 17-year-old, they're, um, they're entitled to confidentiality. But parents often aren't ready to, to give that up. So there's that delicate dance again between acknowledging to the parents that um, you're, uh, you can um, uh, respect their position, but also um, uh, working with the, with the young person and creating a space where they feel safe to explore what's going on. And when they walk in the door, obviously, you don't know what it is they actually want to talk about. So it's really critical that they feel that there's a degree of safety and that the confidentiality is, is respected. Um, and I guess that sort of uh, flows on into the other points that I've got there about giving feedback and the art of presenting your view as well. The young person might walk in and say, well, you know, I'm not really depressed, I'm just angry, I'm irritated, you know, mum nags me all the time, and, you know, school for a bunch of dickheads, pardon the language, but, um, you know, so, of course I've fallen out with them, and, well, the teachers are all, all idiots as well. So they try and present this nice, rational explanation of why they're actually not doing well, and the art, I guess, in presenting back your view might be that, well, Depression in adolescence actually often presents like that, that there is this angry agitation and things like um, failing at school and losing friends are two of the most common features in young people who are, who are becoming depressed or who are becoming psychologically unwell in, in other ways as well. And um, that it's your view that um, what they're experiencing um, while they don't see it as depression, actually fits into um, into something that that can be described as depression, and then how you work with that is um, is important. So they might um, have this perception that uh, if they're depressed, they're going to be morose and under the burn 24 hours a day. Um, and I suppose uh, it is a message um, that you're of what your professional opinion is, but to acknowledge what it is they actually want to work on. So they might say, for instance, in his case, he might actually want to, to begin by working on uh, issues to do with his mum being an act, for instance. Um, that might be the most uh, salient thing at that point in the therapy, and it also might be the safest thing for him to work on. Um, as you read through the case study further on, it obviously gets into uh, uh, issues that sound like hallucinations, potentially gets into um, cyberbullying as well. These are layers that it takes time to get down to, and you, um, in, in the initial sessions, you're not necessarily going to get down to them um, without, a, without a great level of trust first. So. Um, this is where, I guess, um, probing deeper becomes important. Um, exploring a little bit about, um, you know, okay, mum's an ag and we're, we're dealing with those issues, so what are some ways you could work with your mum um, to actually mitigate those sort of problems? But then turning your attention to, so what is actually going on at school? You know, um, obviously, yes, your mum, let's agree that your mum is an ag, but she's, um, she may have a valid point here. Why? Do you think the, um, your friendships have dropped away and why do you think your marks have, have, um, have deteriorated as well? And um, getting into a bit more of a dialogue about um, 
about what actually might be going on there can be very valuable. Um, uh, and, and again, it creates that uh, perception that this mission to talk about these, um, these difficult things. Mary brought that up earlier, yeah, um, the mission to talk about suicide. The more, um, I, I guess one of the things that um, uh, I was trained to do very early on with our lessons, um, speaking with adults, where you might try and encourage them to, uh, to um, explore the options and generate the options themselves. Often with our lessons, it's very helpful to give them some tangible anchors that they can say, well, yes, it is cyberbullying, or yes, it is um, that, uh, that I just can't concentrate in class anymore, or whatever it might be. So instead of opening up, field of possibility for, for a young person, you might actually narrow it down to a couple of things that they can, uh, they can work with. And you can use your intuition um, about what might be going on based on the, the bits and pieces of information you've picked up along the way. Um, whenever I hear um, uh, issues to do with hallucinations and potential suicidality and the question over uh, medication, obviously I'd be very keen to discuss either with a GP or with, um, with a psychiatrist what their view actually is. Um, it's, it's again helpful if you've already established with the young person that you believe that they're depressed to, to then be able to talk about what that might uh, look like, how that might actually develop over time if it's not addressed. So um, the, if you go back, back to the case study, it talks about um, uh, perceptual experiences that seem a bit like hallucinations. Um, to be able to, to give them some framework for understanding, that is very helpful, obviously. But um, it is also important to then get a second opinion, I believe, about, um, about what else might be going on there. I certainly wouldn't be just rely on my own opinion. Um, particularly in a 17-year-old, because um, as many of you probably know, um, one, of the, um, uh, one of the times in life when disorders like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder emerge, sort of uh, late adolescents, early adulthood. So, you know, here's a young boy who's right in, that, in the thick of that period of his life and is a potentially a candidate for an emerging psychosis. Um, <coughs> So, I think that's all I can say for now. That's a great, great Simon. Thank, thank you very much. much. Uh, Pamela, anything that you want to say at this juncture? No. No, they're all okay. okay. All right. My well, then, with um, great, great, great pleasure, pleasure, I introduce uh, Peter Parry, Dr. Peter Parry. He's a child and adolescent psychiatrist with the Southern Adelaide Health Care Service. Um, TAMS actually, uh, Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service, and a senior lecturer at Flinders University. He graduated from Adelaide uh, Medical School in 1983, was a medical officer in the Royal Australian Navy, general practitioner, and worked in palliative care before training in psychiatry from the Glenside Hospital in South Australia. Since 1995, Peter has worked in both inpatient and outpatient TAMS services in South Australia and the UK. He has an interest in mindfulness, based psychotherapy, developmental psychology, and the model underpinning psychiatric diagnosis. And he's published on the controversy surrounding the diagnosis of paediatric bipolar disorder in the USA. We are very interested in your perspective on this. Over to you. Thanks very much, uh, Michael. And uh, thanks also to Mary and Simon, who uh, as uh, GP and uh, psychologist would have, in Tim's case, uh, according to the, um, the case narrative that we have here, would have made my job relatively easy in the way that they've been managed to engage him and uh, keep mum on side thus far. I suppose I think uh, I'm not going to go too much into um, certain key things here which uh, uh, like um, the safety issues, uh, because I think Simon uh, and uh, Mary have done a good job around that, and I did get the feedback from the first edition of this webinar that people wanted uh, me to talk a little bit more about uh, what I said in the natural antidepressants. So I'll come to that. Just to, to say, I think, I think 
a, a, a slightly different attack perhaps with the safety issues in the, the, the confidentiality and saying, saying up front as I was, I was um, get get developing a rapport with him around uh, his, his normal life, life and, and the drawing of genie ground with his interests, etc. Uh, that, that I would say that uh, confidentiality would have a certain limit around safety that I would have to um, speak to others who are very concerned about his safety. Um, so just, uh, uh, anyway, anyway, so um, uh, as, as the, the case history had it here, there, there were some questions which Simon was alluding to at the end there about this is loud, he was hearing voices. And as we, Tim and I, explored the secret voices that were occurring in his kind of speech type, say, often late at night when he was heading off to speech, so hypnagogic hallucinations, they were a critical uh, male voice and um, after, After I had, I had uh, spent a fair bit of time with him over a session or two and did uh, some more questions with his mother who was his mission, uh, one, one got the history of domestic violence um, earlier in his life and a father who uh, was quite negative and critical and, and so one could, could talk to him around the dynamic, psychodynamic meaning perhaps of these and sometimes I should talk to kids like him about, well, you get into these kind of voices, this is social this is no then, then it, 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 it often is like, like traumatic, traumatic memories, memories coming, coming through, so you're, you're having, having a bit of a dream, but you're just sort of awake, and, and it's just coming through while you're awake, and this kind of stuff. That's just, uh, of, of course, course I may assess him, him as uh, having other features, features as more suggestive of a true psychosis, and that would take him down a very different, different track. track. But in, in this, this case, case, it's him, him. No, no, this allows you to try to dress and someone more depressed, and then these auditory hallucinations, I would put him into that kind of box and, and, uh, and he's come up reassuring towards him about those. Uh, uh, also exploring with him in the family history of uh, paternal one with bipolar disorder, I um, asked him as the case history goes on here about these so-called so highs that have been, been talked about. about. This, this was just him really kind of when, when he had, had a few drinks, drinks that his uh, more disinhibited self, uh, well, his, 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 um, he's been described as sensitive and somewhat shy kind of lad, but that uh, he'd be disinhibited by the alcohol and that seemed to be really what was happening. And uh, perhaps I'm getting a little bit of a temporary uh, antidepressants, uh, buzz from the rising uh, ethanol level for a little while there, and there was nothing that was suggested with a true hypermania or mania, so again, reassuring to him, and his mother who was worried from the family history that there was no bipolar, at least at this stage in his life. Um, and, and what, what I uh, found uh, with Tim was, was um, that, you know, this was a lad who, um, uh, his mother had become somewhat enmeshed with him, particularly around the marital difficulties and, and the marital separation. And then Tim, in essence, won the beautiful conflict. He had, like, he needed to sit in and marrying his mum and killing his father, kind of thing. And uh, so... No one had this kind of ambivalent uh, hostile dependent relationship with her. And um, he was feeling uh, somewhat rejected and uh, the loss of his father, who uh, had been quite close, uh, more close to him between the age of 10 and 13, according to Casey's history. And then there were stresses in his current life around falling out with his friend Max and also the problems with a male teacher. And also there's this girl which he liked and uh, he was uh, teased about the side of bullying centred on, um, on this fact. And, and so, so there may there come a time in this where I'd be able to see that the, uh, the link between the precipitating factors and the predisposing factors about this vulnerability towards uh, issues with older or more powerful males and um, his, his issues with uh, his girl and other ambivalent feelings there. Finding, of course, the right language and timing that uh, he could make some sense of that. And, and, and what, what I'm getting, getting at here is actually what's, what's important in an individualised and, and meaningful biopsychosocial um, uh, case formulation that involves those four P's that I'm talking about. And this is far more useful to me, my understanding of what's going on with him, than a simple, uh, simple DSM diagnosis that is just a nominologically uh, based on the symptoms in the here and now and quite decontextualised. Uh, so, so it has to be contextualised, and, and, and then, then what you can do is you can see back to Tim. Him. And what, what I, I tend to like to embed all with this in is the evolutionary paradigm, and how, and, and, and 
think it gives them some idea of attachment theory and rank theory, theory which play into uh, our species in such a way that um, uh, where attachment between human beings is very important and where your place is also important. So, um, it's grief, it's loss, and also shame, shame and depression when, when one, one feels like he did, that he's been excluded by his peer group, group um, and, and cyber bullied, etc. Et and was failing at his, uh, at his school work. But it's, it's natural, natural. We're, we're programmed, we're, we're made, made to actually feel depressed, depressed in these contexts. That, that kind of normalises it, that doesn't mean that it's healthy. healthy. Um, but, but it starts start to give a meaning, meaning to the symptoms and, and then, then say there might, might be a way, way of, of it, uh, uh, moving out, out, out of this state. state. So, so that, that's what, what I've got, got here in terms of uh, this slide and the, the narrative of this life. Just to click with the next, next slide. Um, this, this comes, comes from, from a, uh, Professor Jim McKenna, McKenna of Anthropology, if I'm not done, done with it, he was a keynote speaker at a parenting conference here in Adelaide some years ago. And he, in the context of earlier um, attachment, uh, was, was pointing out that we are really hunting together as parents and the kind of post-industrial lifestyle we're living at the moment. Causes us problems. I uh, won't get it too long. Lost at the moment. Stay on him. So what, so what I, I then um, um, offer is... Uh, Get, get the whiteboard, whiteboard and, and get out from the color of whiteboard, whiteboard markers, markers and, and give them a, a little lecture on uh, neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, and evolutionary um, kind of paradigm. Uh, at, uh, and I, I make, make it fairly humorous, humorous and I'll choose the language where they're at. And point, and point out, uh, out uh, I talk about the brain and the nervous system, and I uh, point out the amygdala and the limbic system, system, and this is where the emotions are. It's, it's, it's simplified in a sense. This is sort of where your moods and your emotions are centered. And I talk about the fight, fight, freeze response, and a lot of the listeners here would know all this stuff, how the frontal lobe gets turned off, and you go into one of those three automatic modes. And then I point to the brain stem and talk about this as the autonomic nervous system, and it has two parts. The sympathetic nervous system, or SNS, and also the parasympathetic nervous system, or PNS. And as pointed out, medical students can both say there's a stress nervous system, and then she said, well, there's a peaceful nervous system, or a So you can be in one or the other. Talk about, about um, different animals, animals like, like a mouse, mouse with a cat, cat, cat with a dog, or a stone age mouse. And uh, they would be too high to describe it all and act out of it. Then point out that in the modern world, we have, we have sort of around, around us in many ways, ways often vague, vague and often and perpetuate, and, and leave our, our um, stress resistance on, on too long. long. And, and so, so the increasing evidence is that depression is a burnout outdated. It is um, has an inflammatory uh, aspect, aspect to it, it of, of being in sympathetic or stress system over too much. much. And Tim, he, he would understand, understand that, that because we were able to talk about all the stresses, and, and this was repeated as Simon was saying, how he's put, put the blame, blame on the context in his life. life. And, and one can agree with him with that, that and point out that maybe he has got this kind of stress run down in his name, sort of a state of system. I then point to diagrammatic reading and about sighing and warning, laughing and sobbing, and how none of us have ever taught these things. things. It's just a time of yawning, it's actually in the womb. Link, Link that, that to uh, a few Chinese breathing yoga, and that athletes like AFL football is lying for gold, and public speakers like, like uh, Julia Gillard, you seem to have mathematic breathing and say, so so what, what I fell over Australia, I'm seeking to ignore problems, and I'm in a very slow, Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Dogs, dogs that use your warning to avoid dog, dog fights, chimpanzees, you use your warning to signal there are no leopards so they can all go to sleep. According to David Attenborough, anyway. anyway. So, so this, this is kind of like a whole session. Except then eventually it ends up with a fact thing, yo yo breathing. And, you know, they say, I feel bad, that's some work for me. At the end of the bamboo with science, science uh, they, they seem to actually give it a good go, and uh, uh, I'm having almost 100% success these days with that, that. particularly with, with uh, just coping with stress, stress, but also um, improving their sleep problems. And, and uh, so, so that's, that's the main, main thing. thing. Uh, so, 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 so
moving right along, and I hope that that makes some sense to you all. Uh, further the natural antidepressants about, and there is evidence behind these things, particularly with sleep deprivation associated with them, your mega and the diet, and even your exercise, vitamin D, vitamin D deficiency, around about half the area may know about this, is around half the Australian population and associated with multiple disorders, including heart disease, hands, schizophrenia, and depression. But, but kind of embedded in the, in the evolutionary paradigm of that 17-year-old year old stone age lad, lad you know, he was, was out hunting, hunting with the men and, and, and uh, the other young, young lads, and bonding, bonding and the rituals, and all that, the men's group, group stuff that went with that, that humour, the sense of success and achievement. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, Tim, Tim might have had, had a sport that he had fallen, Away, away from, from the, how we could get back and hold that and all, and all this, this kind of stuff. Um, um, obviously, obviously, of course, uh, when, when one, 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 all, 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 all the time, time is, uh, is working, working on one's one report and checking, checking that, that uh, one's, one's, one's getting kind of written off, off and not going through this stuff. But I'm not, I'm not really finding, finding that. that. This, is, this, this seems, seems to make, make sense to the kids these days. days. Uh, and, and in, in fact, fact, there's uh, an article just last month from the American, American psychologist, psychologist uh, uh, Roger, Roger Walsh, who's written an Australian trained psychiatrist, psychiatrist called Lifestyle and Mental, mental Health, health and, and it brings together a lot of the increasing evidence around this area. area. And he needs terms of TLC, so life changes. Um, um, next, next slide. And, and, and then there's more traditional approaches. So with him, there would be, again, I think we're working in Sort of a psychodynamic, dynamic, and then <laughs> meaning and narrative, perhaps. Family, family therapy, therapy is the um, case history goes, goes on, for those who've got copies who want to read it. You know, it all went quite successfully because, because we actually managed, managed to get, get him and his, his dad in one day, day and, and dad, dad re-engaged re with, with him, him, which was quite healing, and all the ladies and school teachers that he got on well with. Now, now Mary, Mary mentioned that uh, antidepressant medication starts to take mind, and those are the current guidelines. For severe, severe uh, depression, often when, when one sees the psychomotor retardation, they may be the first line. line. But, but often, often I, I um, would only really use them in the second line. line. There, there, there are other side effects that can increase this suicide with the agitation effect that might occur at 140, 150. And there's also the issue of withdrawal effects, and perhaps this is our eyes. Have been underestimated in the past for that. that. Um, some um, problems, problems with, with the mad mad genesis, uh, birth defect, defect, and osteoporosis. So, so they're not, not um, as I once thought, thought they were about 10 years ago and described this as the first line by the time I'm convinced myself, myself that well, at least they were benign placebo. placebo. Um, but but uh, the placebo effect is wrong in our adolescence. So I try and play that up with the Amir Mikri official supplement to talk about. Uh, the uh, uh, balancing of omega-3 and omega-6 and the anti-inflammatory effect of that, and pressure the inflammatory process. And, and hey, 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 uh, she, she has extensive experience, experience working in the area of serious mental, mental illness, illness or to some extent in sort of family, family conflict, conflict, and when clients have been, been victims, victims of the trauma, crime, crime or, or child, child abuse, and has, has worked, worked as, as a mental, mental health, health nurse in a broad range, range of settings, settings including CAM, uh, uh, in, in inpatient settings, settings and in the university case and well she, she holds clinical, clinical mem membership with the PACFA and it could be credentialed with the Australian, Australian College of Men Men Health, Health Nurses, Nurses and we're looking, looking forward to your, your perspective. Thank you. Uh, uh, my slide. Uh, one of the um, things that, that I've done, I've added an NXP model. model. Um, it's, it's a four-piece model. model. But, but I've actually added a presenting problem, problem so you can call it, you know, the four piece plus one, one if you like. Um, I, I am thinking presenting who presents the problem, who's concerned and who wants the referral, referral and what, what they're, they're actually saying is quite, quite important. important. Um, I, I use, use the model with this four piece or five piece model, model to think, think about, about the intervention that, that I might um, put, put forward, forward to a, an adolescent or a family. 
I've worked, worked in CAM for a long, long time, time and, and it's, it's, it's the bread and butter of, of what, what CAM workers, workers do. do. I, I, I use this model, I've been, I've been trying, trying to think about, about um, intervention um, because that's what people, people were asking for as follow-up. Follow -up. And, and even though it's actually an assessment, assessment tool, tool, I actually use it as an intervention tool. I'm, I'm actually a therapist, therapist, so I, I think, think systemically, systemically about, about a lot of things, things that, that I do. And, and so I've um, added, added the statements underneath the, 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 the P. P. So the so preventing the problem, problem, I think, I think is important. important. From, From a family, family therapy point, point of view, who, who brings somebody, somebody to a therapy, therapy session, session is that quite, quite powerful? powerful? I know, I know. Who, who, who problem is it actually? You know, is it in the case, is it mum problem? Problem, problem who, who actually feels that they've got a problem. problem. The precipitating factors, you know, why is it really, really important question in, in child and adolescent mental health? Why not yesterday, why not last week, why not tomorrow? What's what actually happened lately? Like, what's what actually facilitated this? It actually might be what mum said is facilitated. It might be something that the team said. It might be something else. What, what, what are what the predisposed factors? You know, you know, why, why is this, this kid? kid? Um, and, and in family, family. He, comes he comes from a family, family of three children, so why, why is this, this one? one? That, that, um, suicidal, who's um, having, having some, some sort of hallucination, has a conflict with mum. We don't hear yeah. that the sister is having a conflict with mum. You know, what what's that, that about? about? Is it because, because he's the only boy in the family? Is it because he's the only boy in the family? Um, because, because he's got a different relationship with the, the girls. Um, certainly, you know, you know the, the order, order of the birth, birth when um, dad is with the family. family. Uh, uh, if, if I remember right, the story was about um, the, yeah, uh, the, the youngest, youngest daughter, daughter. You know, you know, things fell apart in the family after, after the, birth of the youngest daughter, I think. I think. So, so, I mean, how, how old was Tim? I'm not sure how old Tim was at the time. But it depends on his age. His, 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 his um, cognitive capacity, um, the, the, the development stage, that he's at, I think, is really quite important. important. Um, um, the the, the, the perpetuating factors, factors um, what, you know, what, what, you know, what, what are the standard dynamics? dynamics? I mean, we, we know, know mum and dad were getting along, along very well, well, well and, and it's only recently, recently that, that um, some work has been done on the dad between the father and the son. So, I'm thinking about what the relationship between mum and him and he and his sisters, sisters and, and all of that, that sort of stuff. Is that, that what's actually perpetuating the problem? problem? Because, because if, if some of that is what's perpetuating the problem, then that's where the intervention might need to be. Um, the protective factors, factors. Um, you know, what, what does this kid actually, actually bring? bring? Because, because he trusts the therapist, therapist that he's, he's actually seen, seen so far, far. it's wonderful. Not all that will let trust anybody. Um, some, some of the kids, kids that come, come in my office, office here, here. They, don't they don't trust anybody, anybody on them, they sit there on the cross. And you've you really, really got to work quite hard, hard to engage, engage them. them. Um, head space, space. You, know, you know, it's, so it's one, one of those places, places where kids, kids come in. in. And sometimes they're, they're pretty, pretty hard um, to actually engage. Because they see a lot of people and they might be quite angry. What I actually did, as a family therapist, I actually used Jenny Lamb's not, not so much as a history of gathering um, um, tools, tools to get in the file to get dusty, but I actually, actually use them and develop them with families. So, so I might have an adolescent and, 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 and sit with them and say, I think you your family. family. I, I, you know, I don't know, know you, you know. What goes on in your family? And, and I mean, I mean even with small children, children they'll actually, I have a whiteboard in my office and they, and they actually will help draw the pictures when they get the hang of the fact that the girls are circles and the boys are squares. Um, and, and off they go, they'll actually tell you who's in the family, who's not in the family, who they go to, what family. I've actually had the um, um, middle school kids come to me and say, they have a whiteboard dust if they want them then. You know, they're not someone who I find helpful. Um, and they actually have the whiteboard dust and they actually have the whiteboard dust and they actually have the whiteboard dust. So it's so a very powerful, powerful therapy tool. tool. And it's really, really not, not that hard, hard to do. do. So, so if you're thinking about it, you've been thinking about it, and, and, and what, you know, you know maybe the family dynamic is something, something that needs, needs to be worked, be worked on, on in addition to the individual work that you're getting. 
when I drew the genogram, I would hope that, that, that as it emerged on the whiteboard in front of the family or in front of the family, they could see some, some of these connections. connections. Because, because there, there are three, three generations, generations of alcohol abuse in families on it. And, and mum has been subjected to that, to that in her childhood and adolescence. So I wonder, I wonder what, what it's been like for her as a mother, mother to deal with, with a husband who's who knows, Who knows what he did when he was when drunk? drunk. Um, um, how unpleasant he might have been. been. And what did the kids see? No, no, what Tim seen? seen? What his sister's seen? seen? We don't, we don't really know, know what Tim's role has been, has been in the family, family since, since mum and dad separated. You know, you know does, does mum rely on him too much? Does mum expect him to be a replacement for the mother and the family? No, he's been asked to discipline them. You know, his sister's. Um, I, find I find all, all of those, those questions, questions quite, quite interesting, interesting. And, and, and actually write, write them on my whiteboard, which is an, an, an externalising kind of technique. Um, it, actually it actually shows what the problem might be rather than the problem, even though you know, they're, you know, they're, they're looking, looking like the identified problems. problems. My, the way, the way I look at these things is the system, um, um, and he destroys the system of those things, which, which he can now see visually. And I, I actually think doing some, some of this sort of work perhaps with his, his mum and his sisters, sisters maybe, maybe down, down the track when he's ready, ready. We'll, we'll show, show everybody, everybody that, that maybe, maybe he's not, not just, just a problem. problem. He's, he's the one, one that's that presenting the therapy. therapy. But, but there's, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on in his family. So that's, I use this, mostly use the therapy tool rather than other than a history taking. taking. It, it, it works both. Um, so, so I just added some of these things in terms of uh, you can use family therapy style interventions. You don't have to be a family therapist. It's really just family centered work. It can be narrative, it can be based on memory, and it can be for teachers. So to be able to actually do it with a genogram and talk about it. And have them see the problem on the whiteboard, so you have to teach the intervention. intervention. That's, that's, that's quite, quite powerful. powerful. And, it, and it can change, change dynamics in families and change, change the way people think, think about themselves about themselves about themselves about themselves. Themselves. Um, I mean, I mean, getting, getting anybody, anybody to group in pre-communication. It might, it might help, help to address, address some, some of the systems in the family, systems and the attachment issues. There's obviously attachment issues. Attachment issues. Attachment issues. Um, clarifying the family, family roles, family, roles family, the family, the strength and relationships. It, it, it might be that the work needs, needs to be done, done between, between him and, and his sisters because, his sisters because, because maybe, maybe he's seen, seen as, as the, 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 the dad, dad doing the family. The family. So, so he's actually lost the relationship as a as sibling, sibling in, in, in that sub-system. Sub um, you know, that sort of work can be beaten Negotiate, negotiate and validate relationships, relationships and so on and so on. And so on. And so on. I, I, I think there's a lot of trauma in the family. family. Um, and, and it may be actually be the, for some, some of the past trauma that's been going on in the family. family. Who, knows Who knows what this is to say? You know, what, what angry, nasty stuff has been going on, yelling, yelling, yelling and screaming when the adults think kids can't sleep. I mean, kids can't sleep through that stuff. Yeah, it's just really interesting. Because, because I'm, I'm very much a family therapist, I think family, family therapy, therapy, but I thought, I thought it was important to also think, think from a mental health, health nurse point, point of view. Um, and in terms, terms of who else, who else I might, might want, to want to be working, working with, with and, and who the team can be. Um, um, so I, so I just, just listed them there. there. Um, um, I... I <sighs> Because, because I've always worked with the public health health, health. I've only been in private practice, practice really for the last 10 years. Too much about access, access for children and adolescents. They don't have any money. So they have to rely, rely on their parents or somebody, or somebody to bring them. them. I, think I think that can have an impact, impact on what they can and can't get down. That's why I think it's fantastic because there's no cost. Yeah, 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 um, through the NBS yes, yes, system, yes, yes, means Tim can actually come without having, having to take a mum or mum or you know, can you pay, pay for the session. session. It, 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 it changes, changes the whole therapy, therapy dynamic about, about, I think, I think about, about how to pay for the issue. issue. Um, um, 
Um, um, ACAP, ACAP, I think, is important, important um, business funding for children in our LBA system, system and is what's dependent on family, family income. income. The Mental, the mental Health Nursing Incentive Program, program I, don't I don't think a lot, a lot of people know about that, that but, but for people, people who are at risk of hospitalisation or being in hospital, a GP can refer to a mental health nurse and people can be seen. Someone like him because of suicidality and his you know, no, hallucinations, hallucinations may mean that the risk of hospitalisation is not the right line of intervention. A mental health, health nurse could do home visiting, could actually do risk assessment if he's not coming up in the GGP. They may be quite a, a useful role. And, and a mental, a mental health, health nurse under this, under this program, program can be involved for, um, you, know, you know, one year, two years, three years. Three years. It's not time limited. limited. So it's very, very useful. useful. And I'm going to have to stop, stop there. there. Thanks, Thanks very, very much for that. that, that, that in in right now, now we've, we've got, got a small problem, problem with uh, uh, Mary's wireless connection, and therefore she's, she's now, now still listening things on the phone, but unfortunately we haven't had one yet to see her, but, but uh, she, she, she can still listen, so that's that good. good. Uh, uh, we, we have been from the with questions, questions and I'm going to start firing them straight away. First question is to Peter. Uh, what, what do you do, do to the, the, the young, young person is hesitant to turn up? up. So, so ideally, mum can contact you, but the kid doesn't want to come. Well, I like to do... Like um, uh, uh, so, so, so I've never, never seen, seen the kid at all. It's, it's not after, after the first session. It's the first session, session, session you didn't have enough. Right, right, right. I think one would... I would phone... Him or, or um, um, if, if uh, that, that uh, was considered to be intrusive, by have to have by, by um, um, I might, I might just just find my Mary, Mary first, first up, up. Um, and, and, and if that was considered perhaps not the way to go with that, that, that or the best thing to send him a letter, letter directly. directly. Um, probably, probably the first thing I do is just reschedule if you'll come to the next point. From my point of view, it would be very useful to have a feedback that he wasn't turning up and. No, no, I'd like, I'd like to, to, to um, find, find out a bit more about, about that and Tim myself and see if I could, I could uh, find, find out what the issue was and support for getting there. Any other panel want to comment on that question? About, about how, how to engage him. How to engage him if he uh, uh, doesn't want to uh, come, come along. along. It, it, it may be that he will really need to be in the and then the mental health nurse back to go out and do some, some sort of intervention then. Um, um, or it or may, may be the mental health nurse has to go and work, 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 spend, spend some time, time just having, having a coffee, coffee with mum if he's a tiny mum out. And, um, and um, can, can I just say this also on the GPP, do you have minutes as well? Good to know. No, no, it's great. great. And the, and the, and other, the other thing, thing is, um, at, at the head of I work at, we have an intake process where there's a phone call that's booked. So, so even if mum, mum rings up to make the initial contact, contact when our intake officer rings, they would ask to speak to the young person. person. So often, so often they've, they've had, had a bit of time, time to think about, about it, it. They're, prepared they're prepared to talk on the phone, phone. and then, and then once, once talks on the phone, they're willing, willing to come in person. In person. So, that, so that's just an um, advantage of having having both persons. Sorry, sorry, just a minute. In this case, there is a question of hearing voice and some suicidal ideation. And given that... GP um, had, had a good call with him, him I'd be on the phone to her, mm -hmm. expressing mm -hmm. concerns that he had, um, um, and certainly, certainly could she do a home 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 visit or find time to engage in just, just, just reassess the safety risk, risk the depression may, may have uh, worsened worse than maybe may be at high risk. Hey, beautiful. The, the, uh, the, next, the next question, question which I'm going to provide to the panel members is, what do you do if mum this is on, on the being part, part of that, that consultation had him been, been 12, 12 years, years old. old. And, and I, I think, think we'll, we'll start, start with, with uh, our GP. Our GP. <laughs> Um, well, well, if, well he's, if, he's, if he's 12, 12 I, I think, think mum really, really probably, probably has to be part of it. But, but I, I always, um, I'm fairly associated with, with parents, parents, but I, but I, I like, like to see them, see them with, with the young, the young person, person together, together first. first. And I, and I explained since the beginning, beginning that, that, that my normal, normal practice would be to see the two of them together and then see the other person on their own towards the end. I was very happy with it. There are lots of 12-year-olds that want mum to stay. Um, um, I, I, the more difficult thing, thing with 12 year olds is when mum wants to talk to you on her own first. first. Mm. I, I'd, I'd be interested with how, how, how other people, people respond to that, that question as well. well. 
Anyone, anyone else? In the but I, I see a see lot, lot of disordered age, age groups. groups. And, and I, I often, often say, say to them, even the younger, younger ones, ones, well, do you know, do you know why, why this mum, mum, mum wants, wants me to see you, and, you mum? and mum? So I don't, so I don't actually talk, talk about, about just, just the kids. The kids. I, say, I say, you know, you mum, 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 you and mum, 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 mum come. Do you know why this is? You know what it is that mum wants? So that... I, I, and often the kids will say, well, that's mum, 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 mum,
mental health assessments are training specific in quality and mental health assessments and mental state assessment risk assessments. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, okay. Uh, another, uh, another question, question uh, uh, comes through, and, and that, that, that is to all, all the panel, panel members. How, how important, important is Tim's sexuality, sexuality in, in uh, such an assessment? assessment? And I'll throw and I'll that, throw that, that open, open to anyone. anyone. Very? 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 Very. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty critical, Pretty critical really. really. Um, um, I think, I think we're, we're, I, I, was, there was there a specific, specific detail, detail there about, about sexuality? sexuality? I, I can't, can't, can't recall, recall at the moment. moment but he never had a girl girlfriend, friend, but he was keen, keen on, on this particular girl, girl that I'm following on photo. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, it's prob perhaps, perhaps more uh, critical, critical if, he's, uh, um, if he thinks he might, might be homosexual, homosexual and there's issues about coming out. Coming out. Mm -hmm. um, um, obviously, obviously um, um, that presents a whole, whole other raft of issues, issues, but, but, but um, he, um, uh, you know, he's obviously, obviously struggling, struggling with, with um, you know, you know Establishing, establishing a, a relationship, relationship in the first instance and, and uh, struggling, struggling with the, the reaction, reaction of his peers to that, to that as well. As well. So, so, um, I, I, don't I don't necessarily see that as an issue of sexuality, so much as maturation, but he's not, not quite, quite there yet. yet. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to the, the, uh, the person who asked the question, question that in part, part of the head 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 assessment is in fact the question, question that goes, go, many young, young people, people your age are experimenting with all, with all sorts, sorts of different, different relationships. relationships. Have you, have you had, had a relationship, relationship with, with the girl, girl or guy or both using gender neutral language? But as the facilitator, I shouldn't intervene, but I won't. My next question is from an OP. Uh, they're, they're just, just wondering, wondering whether, whether or not they, they fit, we, we feel as a panel, panel that there, that there would, would be a role, role for an OT, an occupational, occupational therapist, therapist, in this particular case. case. My, my, my feeling, feeling about, about it, and, 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 and as you can see from, 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 the, from the slides, slides that, I that I put, put together, together, I think, I think an OT. Um, can, can be part, part of, of a mental, mental health, health team. team. I mean, working in camp, we had psychologists, social workers, OTs, speech pathologists, um, um, it, depends it depends on, on their, their training. training. Um, I, I think, think the difference is not, is not as important, important as the, the skill the base, base, the tool, the tool, the tool, the tool base, base people that people actually bring, bring to um, work, work with any client. client. Um, and I, and I, I agree that, that I have, um, I've, I've always often, often worked with OTs as part, part of the primary care teams I work in, and I think they bring a great pragmatic functional kind of, kind of perspective, perspective to, to when you have case discussions, discussions and things like that, that. And, and, and as, as well, well as actually working, working, working with young people. people. And they're often really, really good, good at um, um, pulling, pulling out the, the kind of practical things, things that are, that are a, a, a problem, problem for the young person, person that, that, that people, people might not think to ask about. So I think actually they're very valuable as part of the Okay, okay, great. The next question relates to what, what would happen, would happen Peter, Peter, if a, a GP play was dealing with, dealing with him, him in, in an, an environment, environment where, where there was, was no, no psychiatrist available or no, no psychiatrist team? team. Uh, uh, what, what would, would the, the treatment, treatment or the, the uh, action be, be in those, in those cases? Those cases? Um, well, well, uh, I assume, I assume, assume uh, what, else, what else is, there, is in, in their, their area. area. I mean, I mean, it's generally some kind of, kind of camp, camp service, service uh, covering, covering all parts of the country, country. Um, and, and, and even, even visiting, visiting service, service, and they would, they would be able to link that back to uh, child, child, child adolescent, adolescent psychiatrist uh, uh, in the city, and we do and we have a heli link up, uh, at least in this state. Could you just explain a little bit about that? Uh, well, uh, well, it's like covering the river land, south Australia, Australia, and, and um, there's a camp, camp team, team out there, out there and, and uh, uh, GPs uh, uh, sometimes, sometimes not, not be okay, okay with, with treating adolescent depression. depression. It's got a, got a very difficult, difficult case, and, and they, so we get so camps, camps work out there on the day. On the day. Urgently, urgently, they, they contact, contact me, me um, by, by phone, phone or email. Or email. Um, um, I, I discuss the case with them. I might organise the child, child be it, be it, for the teenage, the teenage maybe to be admitted, admitted to the local, local um, um, Riverland, Riverland Hospital. And, and then we organise the health uh, uh, you know, in a few, few days' days time, time to see the, the young, young person and family, family and the GP, GP sometimes, sometimes and certainly the camp work. work and we try and do it all over the health. Beautiful. Uh, uh, next, next question, question is, is 
what, what if M continues, continues to deny, to deny any, any depressive, depressive symptoms, symptoms and then, and then a few sessions later, later he decides to stop coming, coming only, only to spite his mother, mother who is super, super involved, involved and almost, and almost always, always are the, 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 the practitioner, practitioner first. first. <laughs> Some things would be on their control. control. It was, it was my, my first thought. Um, um, but, but the other the one other was, one I think, was, I think can, there's, 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 there's a, a, I, I sometimes am very, very firm, firm to his parents, parents about, about how difficult it is to engage someone. someone. Um, um, you, know, you know, and that, and that, 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 that individuating or separating from, 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 from the family and becoming their own person is a lot of what this is about. And a way to respect that is to allow them to see me on their own. Doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. I agree with you, and I think, um, you know, I would, I would uh, follow, a follow a similar, similar sort, sort of approach, of approach and, and uh, if, if Tim did disengage, um, probably, probably one of the first things, things I'd do is try to talk to him by phone, phone or maybe email, email um, 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 to, to see if, if any sort any of sort connection could be re-established. But if all else failed, I would probably in the end send him a therapeutic letter to summarise what we've done. Summarise what I've seen his strength being, being and, and uh, uh, perhaps talking, talking about, about a way, way forward, forward for him, him. Uh, and, and you know, how we might, might go about, go about uh, finding, finding a way forward. One of, one of, one of the interventions that can be quite useful when you have these kind of mothers is you arrange for her to have therapy of her own because then sometimes her neediness can be dealt with and she can leave the child therapy alone. Yes, yes. Absolutely. I think it's just to emphasize the need to, need to, uh, to, uh, to report therapy to the young, young person, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, ahead and, ahead and foremost, foremost uh, from the mother, the mother parent. Uh, another, another way, another way is, is some colleagues, colleagues uh, out the back, the back behind, behind me, me. Um, um, they, they uh, uh, serve a certain camp here called Youth Link, link so we uh, deal with the more difficult to engage adolescents, and they do a lot of work text messaging. Um, I haven't got the details for you, but they, they published a paper, paper, on, paper that. on that. Quite a lot of, quite a lot of essays and text text to, to keep engaged. I, I, I sometimes think that when, when, when adolescents become disengaged, it's because they're trying to find their own way. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
you get the you full, get the full story, story, you feed it back, back to them, there's, there's a meaning, meaning full narrative, narrative of why they why ended, ended up here, and it's not like, not like you know, you know, they've suddenly developed, developed, developed an illness, illness mm-hmm. because it was, it was bad, bad and, and, or they were desperate, desperate for it, or, 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 or medication, medication really, it's, 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 it's very rare. 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 Um, um, and, and, and so I think that in a way itself is a big And having good humour, you know, the way you discuss things. Mary. Mary. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think I an think important, important thing is the, 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 the attitude of the health, health professional themselves, themselves. And, and I guess I, I guess talk, I talk to medical students, students a lot about, about, about um, um, with mental with health, health as in any other aspect, other aspect of health, health, health just, just realising realize that, that, that for the grace of God go go and in fact maybe I do go there. And, you know, I think it's... Especially, Especially perhaps, perhaps the medicine, medicine can be a be enough situation, situation. You know, that, you know, will, that never will never happen to me. But, but if I'm not talking, I'm not talking about, about disclosure, but I'm talking about, about the, 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 the appreciation that I could, that I could be in your shoes, your shoes including, including with mental, mental health, health problems. problems. And I think, and I think that, that, that um, um, you know, that, you know, that actually gets conveyed, conveyed in the relationship between you and the attitude between you. You can call it transference if you want, but... I think, I think it, it is conveyed that, 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 that um, um, I'm, I'm not I'm thinking, thinking that this could never happen to me. 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 All right, well, that's beautiful. Well, well guys, guys, we've reached, reached these 750 mark, 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 and this is, this your, is your opportunity, opportunity for, a, for a, a three a minute, minute uh, uh, summing, summing up. up. And, and uh, uh, since we since can't see you, Mary, we might start with you. Um, um, I don't think that I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm not really into really it, I don't think I have anything, anything, anything um, particular to add to it, I just, I guess, I guess never undervalue the relationship, relationship. whatever, whatever your, your discipline, discipline, if you, if can, you can convey to the young person that you are really interested in their situation and you want to see them again, it's important to you to see them again next week or next fortnight or whenever it is. They, 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 they respond, respond to that, that. And, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not, not sure that it actually matters, matters all, all that much, much what you do, do, other than that. Yeah, would, yeah, you, would you agree with me that GGs are really the backbone of adolescent mental health care in Australia? Um, um, they could they be. They could be. I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure, sure that that's the reality, unfortunately. But, but, I mean, there's certainly the people that the adolescents often come to first, if they go anywhere. And, um, and um, I guess my, I guess hope, my is hope is that that would, that would be, be a therapeutic, therapeutic experience, experience for, them. for them. If you had, if you had uh, 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 the ability, the ability to, move to move or remove or just, a just a couple, couple of barriers, of barriers uh, uh, that, exist that exist for young, for young people, people to access to GPs, GPs, what would what they would be? They be? Um, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking in many cases the finances are a barrier. Um, so, um, I so I guess that, I, I so really, that, really, that, that, that was the um, question that Hemet Hayes was probably, probably designed, designed to answer in a way. way. So, so to make to it, make it, it acceptable, acceptable in a location that's easy, easy, easy for them to get to without having, having to rely on mum and dad, dad, dad um, um, not, having, not having money in order to come, making people aware that they can get their own Medicare card once they're 15. Um, um, talking, talking about, about confidentiality, confidentiality um, honestly, up front, front of, of, you know, of you know, the introduction, not to promise not to things, things that you, you can't you guarantee, guarantee confidence, confidence around, around, but, but also, also indicating, indicating that you can. can. I, think, I think, you know, you know being, being genuine, genuine, I guess. I guess. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank, thank, thank you very, thank much, very much for your contribution. contribution. Peter, I know you're going to go show, so can you give us your summing up, please? Yes, it's to remember the context. And to and show, show the, the young person, person and the family, and the family actually, actually, that, that um, you're, you're fully aware, fully aware of, context. of the context. Find the, find the, the meaning, the, meaning the, the why has, has uh, have they, have they developed, developed what they have, they have problem, problem uh, at this uh, point in their life. life. And, and uh, I think uh, Anne, Ann, you know, she, she did a great, did a great job, job of, of uh, uh, all the developmental, developmental mystery and family dynamics. dynamics, 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 dynamics in fact, one has to consider. Um, 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 I've mentioned, mentioned the life style factors, 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 the evolutionary factors, paradigm, factors, paradigm factors, which also, also one consider. Um, um, and then, and then uh, you know, you never, know, never to get, get uh, safety, safety issues, issues and uh, suicide, suicide prevention, prevention inside inside it's always, always to, 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 to keep, keep that in that mind. mind. And, and, and that, that, that comes back to, to the strength of the alliance, alliance uh, to uh, have a good solid support. Basically, when they know that you like them, you want to help them, those kind of very... On specific uh, woolly factors, woolly factors probably the most powerful, powerful. powerful. Um, and, um, and the paper that, that I did, did mention by Shedler, Shedler to, to point, to point to that, 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 that the long term uh, outcomes, uh, outcomes like dynamic uh, aspects, uh, aspects of therapy are the most powerful, powerful. In other words, in other words, therapeutic, therapeutic relationship. relationship. Fantastic. Fantastic. Can, can I just ask you one question in conclusion, and that is 
uh, we, uh, know we know that the are not, are not fabulously, fabulously distributed, distributed across, across the uh, country. In fact, I believe the worst, worst distributed, distributed uh, medical, uh, medical specialty, specialty in Australia. In Australia. Uh, is, uh, anything is anything being done, done about, about that? that? Um, um. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't. No, I, no okay, I, okay. You've sprung that on me. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, the the economic things, unfortunately, are the private factors going through bigger gaps. There'll be that added to it. On that we'll see people like in Adelaide, the folks from the Eastern Union and Northern suburbs. Yeah, yeah. I think it comes back to better funding, funding of uh, public health public services, services or, or uh, much more much radical, radical uh, looking at Medicare, Medicare where you, uh, you uh, look at the postcode post code code and, uh, and maybe try and get, and get uh, find some find incentive. incentive. And that goes and that GP, GP too. Uh, uh, and all for uh, the high cost as well. You well, know, you know, about the, um, some trying to get some of the area out in the outer suburbs. In South Australia here, we've got Elizabeth in the north and down south. Sort of out around Adelaide, 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 Adela
Well, guys, well, guys I'd like to thank you all very much for your contribution. contribution. Uh, uh, Participants, you, you are encouraged to fill out, fill out the, uh, the X, X survey, survey and you're invited, and you're invited to, to post, post comments, comments on, on uh, uh, tonight's, tonight's webinar, webinar on the online, online forum, forum in the Indian Mental Health, Health Professionals, Professionals Network, Network online. online. We're, we're still, still getting, getting this. Uh, uh, we uh, recognise that nothing's perfect, perfect, so we'd really like your comments and constructive criticism. Every participant will be sent a link to the online, online resources, resources uh, that have been uh, discussed tonight, tonight and associated, associated with, the with the webinar, webinar. certainly within 24, 24 hours. hours. And, um, and uh, I'd just like I'd to extend my thanks, thanks to, to the audience for participating. For participating. And, um, and panel, you are truly magnificent, and I really appreciate the effort. And thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.